Catherine, Catherine uh, what's her name? <laughs> Thank you, Hepburn and Cary Grant, you know, where they give and take. Uh, and it was supposedly so, according to the legend, or at least uh, Barryman himself, that he had written a script and said, this is not going to be good, but the actors took it aside and uh, started working on it and said, no, go, you go ahead, the director, we'll fix something. And they did. And it's a, it's a really wonderful kind of repartee uh, back and forth between uh, what turns out to be husband and wife hair that, that uh, uh, also builds on inf infidelity. Uh, interesting, uh, at the, if you're interested in Bergman biography, biography, um, he had been, um, uh, you know, ran off, I think, with Harriet Anderson, one of his um, uh, actors, um, and sort of been through that experience himself, as had his wife. And a uh, story has it that his wife, who was then divorcing him, basically, helped him to write the script. So there's a lot of female input here, but of course she's not credited. Um, and uh, he, she, in fact, uh, put something in a Bergman script with another Marianne, which is scenes from a marriage. Same kind of story, uh, in a way, about infidelity, but as opposed to a 50s comedy, which was supposed to be funny and quick, and people went to see it and paid money for it, then you have scenes from a marriage, which is much more, which you're going to see soon, violent between man and wife who are divorcing. Both characters are called Marianne in that story uh, as well. And, but in any case, uh, I, it's, I think in the script, and he ripped it off from his own wife, uh, where she says that men are, I'm not saying that, it's Marianne who says it, men are children with genitals. That's one way of looking at it. That's the way she looked at it. In any case, um, so, uh, moving on then, um, to the, let's say, the 70s, with a breakthrough. Um, so if these critics were quite sort of, hmm, uh, sort of skeptical to Barryman's, uh, you know, take on women, that he supposedly understood them, blah, 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 um, came, uh, the 70s came along then with the breakthrough of feminism on the intellectual arena. And the interest then grew again on Bergman's um, uh, portrayal of women. Um, and this was primarily the case in the States. There was a book, for instance, called From Reverence to Rape, 1964, by Molly Haskell. I think it's quite interesting to read in a historical light, uh, the way she analyzes films at the time. And even though Haskell was quite critical of Barryman too, uh, she did celebrate him for, as she said, having given us so many female characters as rich and complex as in the works of any writer, whether, whether male or female, end quote. Now, I wanted then to give you the other Marianne. Let's see if I can find it here among all my crazy papers. <coughs> Where did I put it? Oh, there it goes. Uh, which is seen from a marriage then. I think it's uh, that one. <coughs> can it be that one? Yeah, okay, and then I'm supposed to do this, see if it works, yeah. play. So this is then, this is then, from Scene from a Marriage from 1973, um, actually, which ended up, uh, uh, as you may know, uh, being the model for even a, a series, supposedly, of Dallas, uh, the, the American uh, very successful um, nighttime soap opera uh, because it was called Soap Opera for Intellectuals, this one, and they really wanted to uh, model it on, on uh, uh, Barryman's uh, Scenes from Marriage from 73. And it has also influenced, um, what's his name, Hagar's Israeli uh, in treatment. Uh, he said that uh, he was really, you know, taken by the way Bergman built this six-hour 
a television version which was then edited to a cinema version because especially the states wanted it. Supposedly, and not supposedly, I happen to know for a fact from people who were there around uh, where the film was shown in, in New York, uh, there was like a double line around the block to see this film. So that was, he was huge at the time in the States. Much thanks to Liv Ullmann, this wonderful woman who gives her former husband, they're sitting in a office, supposedly soon to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, write their names on the divorce papers. So, here we go. Here we go, we don't go there. Anyway, there you also saw an example, <clears throat> not only of how the same thematics could be much more straightforward at another time, at another time when this was sort of more listened to. And I would say that had it not been for the sort of discussion of feminism the, on the intellectual arena at the time in the Western world, this, I don't think Bergman would have written this play, or written, written the way he did it, because the trajectory, you see, Marianne goes from a housewife and she goes upwards, uh, whereas Johan starts there, goes downwards. Um, so in a way, one can say that Bergman genders the man as well. I mean, he gives him gender characteristics. He watches things from a man's point of view, which is quite seldom, I think, uh, written about. Now, my question is, uh, how much time do we have? Uh, to... Oh, okay. So I, I think I'd better jump a few things here then to let you see at least one more clip. In any way, also, I might say that you also saw here, if you have a good script, uh, which I maintain that this is, um, uh, you can actually shoot on 16 mil, as Bergman did here. It's extremely uh, cheap film, a six-part television series shot at his home uh, with almost existing furniture. And I think, I seem to remember that the actors also invested in it and so on, and it became a huge seller, of course, so anyone who <clears throat> got a percentage in that film uh, had his future made. In any way, <clears throat> in any case, between the sort of um, uh, 50s uh, um, battleships and the sort of truth-telling uh, women of the 70s, there were the existential chamber plays of Bergman. I think I will have to jump that a bit now. Um, for instance, The Silence. I don't know if it's part of your series, but... Um, um, uh, and I wanted actually to show... Well, why don't I show that now? Because th this is one of those films that Bergman actually <coughs> made women uh, then uh, take on existential themes. Now, what was the film was sold as, though, uh, was um, <clears throat> uh, as a sex film. Of course, there was sex in this film that was cut out in the American version, but I'll show you the uh, trailer, uh, how the film was sold, although it's very existential. Uh, let's see if I find it, video three. Ah, oh, there it is. So this is the American trailer, and you can see how they sell it. I would say that he probably un helped undermine it. But the interesting thing in the film is, um, if you look at his uh, script writing and his notebooks, is how he considers um, um, sexuality, uh, sex, as a kind he writes in his notebook, it's not uniform, but changing, doubled, it's, um, but changing, it's doubled and divided, mixed and often painful. So he watches, looks at gender and uh, as a kind of fluid entity, um, negotiable, so to speak. And there are in his films sort of homoerotic themes and characters. Some of them he has written his most beautiful speeches for, I'd say in a German film, for instance, that he made once. But, of course, this also comes from the theater, and that's where I've shown you the last clip here, uh, because there are cross-dressing 
there are these, um, you know, in Shakespeare, there are men dressed dress as uh, women and vice versa. So that's an old motif, obviously, uh, going back to antiquity. And the interesting thing is that um, uh, besides his work in the theater, Bergman also did opera. And he staged um, um, Euripides' uh, ancient play, The Bacchae which deals with Dionysos and the way he gets um, uh, 12 women, I think it is, to follow him and his beliefs. He stages an opera, and I just want to show, end by showing you Bergman himself directing. Um, and you don't need to really understand what's being said. First, it starts, I think, with him talking to the uh, orchestra. He gives the background uh, as to Dionysus being born, uh, and uh, then creating his uh, followers, all women. But look who plays the roles. That's, that's the only thing you need to look at, I think, in this one.